Building a satellite is pretty complicated. It requires a lot of parts, a lot of different disciplines. It's not something that people talk about in a lot of detail all the time. So we're gonna bring you along and show you how we build our micro geo satellites here at Astronus. To start, our satellite is a cube. Everything's built around the six panels of the satellite from the way we design it and the way we assemble it. It's the base structure of the satellite. We start with our goal of providing fast, dedicated service to people around the world. The payload is the part that provides that service to Earth. That's comprised of the antenna, the software-defined radio, the amplifiers, the frequency converters, all working in concert to send data up and down. So now we got to power everything. We add on the solar arrays, we add in the batteries, we add the power systems in between them, regulating that to the rest of the bus. All these electronics need to be operated and controlled by us. So the first thing we power is the flight computer. That then tells everything else what to do, turn on, off, control, spin, beat, buzz. How does it know what to do that? We talk to it from the ground, from our TTNC system. Okay, now you need the LNAs, the SSPAs, the antennas going up and down, the whole loop of it. Next, we need the ability to maneuver the system. That includes our two propulsion systems, one of which is electric thrust with our Hall effect thruster, one is chemical thrust with our hydrazine thrusters, and then also fine pointing, which we use the reaction wheels for to maneuver the spacecraft around to point exactly where we want. All the different parts have to be connected together both mechanically and electrically, so there are a number of bolts and brackets, and there are also a number of harnesses where all the wires run from all the different components. So all of this needs to be shielded from radiation in geo-orbit, so we have everything packed within this internals of our spacecraft. And that's how we build a satellite, but now we actually need to build it. And so big traditional geosatellites, they're usually designed per customer. They're like these really bespoke things. They take a while to design and a really long time to build just because of their size and complexity with the different designs. But here at Astronus, we wanted to rethink that model, go into smaller, more densely packed satellites. We do that because it saves design time, it saves time in production, and overall that saves the cost of the satellite and that value gets added back to our customer. Improve the technology, increase the speed to get them up there, and bring more people online more affordably. So a requirement is kind of what it sounds like. A requirement is a statement that says it shall weigh less than 420 kilograms. It shall have a certain level of redundancy. And all that flows down into detailed requirements for each unit. Each piece that goes on the satellite will have certain requirements that it has to meet. You have to have a budget for your mass, for your power, for your batteries, your arrays. There's so many different aspects you have to design, optimize, and engineer for. One of the key acronyms that we use, even though we try not to use too many acronyms, is SWAP which stands for size, weight, and power, but costs on there as well. You can't have one system take all of the mass and then nothing else is able to fit there, or all the volume, or all the power, or cost too much that we can't build a satellite. All those come into budgets that we start building early so we can portion those out to the different systems as we build the whole satellite. It's very easy to make a very rosy, perfect picture of saying, if we can just make this happen, this is gonna be the best satellite in the world. The best satellite in the world doesn't exist on a spreadsheet. It exists in space. So we have to make some sacrifices sometimes. We have to make it more manufacturable, more assemblable, so we actually can deliver a product to the customer at the end of the day. You want to start testing and figuring out your designs really work. The first step of that is qualification. You build up a copy of each unit and you put it through a really gnarly environmental campaign. Vibration, thermal cycles, vacuum cycles, EMI, EMC, radiation. We show this product will survive anything we throw at it. We do qualification both for units like electronics boxes and also for the full spacecraft. For our QualSat, we're proving out the structure of the satellite. We're building a satellite that has no electronics, it's just dummy mass simulators, but it allows us to put it on the vibe table and prove that the primary structure of the satellite works. The point of Qual is to show that you have so much margin that this design is good. Once that's done on that one single unit, you're very confident every unit after that is gonna meet your mission requirements. The actual process for building the satellite is taken into account in how we design spacecraft. And we wanna do it in a way that is quick and also is able to scale. Between programs, we make subtle design changes, which really helps us decrease production time. We learn a lot when we build and test a satellite, and then that gets fed back to our design team so that we can make it a lot easier the next go around. So a big part of actually building satellite is getting the stuff you need to build. We have our supply chain team that's responsible for the procurement of every single component that goes on a spacecraft. The bomb or bill of materials, is a super simple document that ends up being surprisingly complex. It's just a list, everything that goes into a satellite. 
The small form factor of our satellite is allows us to build at this like crazy speed that we're doing. Our biggest panel, someone can still reach to the center of it. That's huge because you don't need all this extra support equipment for a human. For us, like we can just stand on the ground, reach everything we need to. Some of the panels are light enough to just be picked up by people. And it gives us a lot more flexibility in where we can build the satellite. How can we build as many things in parallel as possible so that we can have lots of people working on it and build it quickly? And then how do we assemble those into units, which are really based on what's easy to put together, what's easy to build a full system, and how we can test along the way. The point of acceptance is to make sure we catch any early errors in the process. Maybe a part didn't hit its rated lightspan. Maybe there's a small manufacturing error. We want to catch that as fast as we can before it goes into the next levels of assembly. The propulsion systems that we have on board are things we have to test very thoroughly because they're safety critical. Leak checks, pressurization checks, pressurization to above the level they will ever see on flight. And additionally, we do a full hot fire of our electric thruster. But at a certain point, You've built a full satellite. It's time to see if that really works. So we put it in a thermal vacuum chamber. The whole satellite goes in there and simulates being in space. Day in the life. Just make sure it's doing what it should do every single day out there. It's the final time you get to say, does this do what we need it to do? Let's see. When it comes out of the TVAC chamber, it comes back to the integration team for a little bit. We put the solar rays on and then we put it on the vibe table and we mimic the rocket launch to see if it can survive the vibe loads. At that point, it's ready to launch and we successfully built a satellite. Our main goal here is to get the timeline between when someone asks for a satellite and when we send it as fast as we can. Every single step of that process, there's one thought in our mind. How do we make sure the satellite is going to work as expected? A lot of times if you have a component that fails a test and has to be removed, it's a full stopping point for the program. But for us, we have so much flexibility built into the design that we typically never reach that point and keep making progress. So here at Astronus, we built and designed our satellite to work hard and be built fast. But one of the most inspired things that makes that actually possible is the fact that the people also work hard and work fast. And people consistently work 10, 12 hours days and weekends to really hold an aggressive schedule that we push onto ourselves to get the next block of satellites out. And that's what's going to get us to 20 plus satellites a year.